Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Come on. Joy. Put your hands together. Joy.
lamb of God. Why you love me so? Why you love me so? But I shall never know the precious lamb of God. Even when I broke, broke your heart. That's right. Take your seats for a moment. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Cut me up a little bit, Aaron. I said I'm glad to be in the service. There it is. Amen. I I'm glad to be in the service one more time. And I'm glad to be in the service to celebrate Jesus. Amen. While many are finishing up last minute shopping and getting last minute items for the dinner and all that. Amen. I know, amen, that they're hustling and bustling all over the place. Right. But praise God, we can take time out for Jesus. Amen. Come on, y'all can be seated. Y'all can be seated. Y'all can be seated. Amen. Y'all can be seated in the house. We had come together in agreement that this year we would do something unprecedented in our previous years, and that is worship on Christmas Eve night. Amen. Usually we gather together on Christmas morning, amen, yeah. but amen, we're together tonight, amen. Yeah. And, and, and I come to tell you, ain't no sense of sitting up stiff and starchy like a statue. We could have stayed home and did that, amen. Amen. Come on, we here to worship tonight, amen. We here to worship tonight, amen. We're here to say happy birthday to Jesus. I see uh, Sister Lita in the audience tonight, praise God, amen, and, and she was fortunate in favor to be born on Christmas Day, amen, ah. so we need to say happy birthday to her tonight as we celebrate the Lord, but just wanted to pause for a moment, amen, and just say God is good, amen, yeah. amen, that's what I wanted to really say, in spite of it all, through it all, and even in it all, God is still good. He's good. I I was speaking to one of the members earlier tonight on the phone, and uh, as we came into 2014, God said this was going to be a year of changes and challenges that would truly confront us, amen. And if you've lived in the real world, because I've been in the real world, y'all, amen. Some people, amen, they, they, they stay in the spirit all day long, every day, amen. But you still have to deal with reality, amen. Yeah. And in reality, there's been some changes. There have been some challenges, amen. Some unavoidable that has confronted you and you had to make choices. Amen. And my choice in 2014 was to trust God with all my heart. Amen. Because you do know that's a choice. I mean, that's a choice, amen. Amen. You have to choose to trust God. Amen. When challenges and changes confront you, and let me say it again, you have to choose to trust God. Amen. Because life can be disappointing. Life can be devastating. Life can be depressing. Amen. Y'all looking at me kind of funny over there. I'm going to look at y'all over here for a moment. Amen. Right. But, but you have to make a choice that say, even though I'm going through changes and challenges, and even though I'm devastated and disappointed by what happens, I choose to trust God. Amen. And choosing to trust God, it doesn't alleviate your pain. It doesn't, uh, amen, remove your burden. It doesn't fix your problem. But when you choose to trust God, amen, God is the one that will lift that burden. God is the one that will alleviate. Y'all ain't feeling me yet. God is the one that alleviated the pain, amen. It seemed coming into the end of this year, things just started to snowball after Cameron had to go into surgery, amen. And after his surgery, another thing happened and another thing happened and another thing happened. I just came back from Chicago last night at the home going to one of my real good friends, amen. And two weeks ago, we were celebrating his 60th birthday. It's Sunday later, amen. We were shocked about his departure, amen. A a amen. But I say God is still good, amen, because he's kept me even when I couldn't keep myself this year. Amen. I said he helped me when I couldn't help myself this year. Amen. Amen. It's testimony time and I want to get mine out. Amen. Because the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. Amen. Who is that? The ones he redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Amen. When Satan thought he had got me and grabbed me and brought me down and to took me under, it was Jesus that lifted me. Amen. And so I'm standing here tonight because not because I've been so good, done so good, know so good. Man, let me shout it out. God's been good to me in spite of me, amen. In spite of the good and the bad, the happy, the sad, the right, the wrong, the up and down, I'm shouting tonight because I'm still here, amen. And if I don't get nothing else for Christmas, I mean, if nothing's under the tree, amen, and there are no packages, there are no envelopes, man, God has given me life, and he ain't just gave me an ordinary life. He done gave it to me more abundantly, so I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for everything. Not one thing, not two things, not three things, but I wanted to tell God, thank you for everything you have done for me, amen. 
Come on and give my God a big praise. Give my God a... Yes, Lord. Somebody else might want to say something tonight, amen. Now, I know all of y'all, God ain't been good to you this year, so you probably got nothing to say, amen, but somebody probably got something. Amen, Sue. Amen. tonight amen anybody else right here, right here. amen i know it's a secret god bless some of y'all so right here. amen come on and, and following your messages from glad to great i just want to say god is great and greatly to be praised amen. come on here that's it amen see you ain't got to say a whole lot of stuff amen amen you can just say one thing amen amen you can just say god is good and that's good, good. enough you do know if you just tell somebody he woke me up this morning, that's a testimony. Uh -huh. Y'all do know back there, if you just tell somebody he put clothes on my back, that's a testimony. Come on, how many of y'all know if you just get up and say he let me comb my hair this morning? I, I remember, amen, some time ago a woman jumped up in, in testimony service and she said that exact thing. She let me, he let me comb my hair this morning. And folk were sniggling, giggling, and laughing, talking about, that's strange. We all combed our hair this morning. But they didn't know it had been about three, four, five months where that woman couldn't lift her hand up, couldn't get her hand up. And God had blessed her to raise her hand and comb her own. See, some of y'all take it for granted, amen. I said, some of y'all take it for granted, amen. Everybody ought to be able to just say, if nothing else, God, thank you for letting me be alive right here and let me be a... Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, and I'm not speaking up from a materialistic standpoint. There you go. But even on a materialistic standpoint, you're blessed and highly favored. When I went downtown and I saw people in, in little houses, Look at that. cardboard boxes, and all that kind of stuff, just this morning, and I had a bed that I got out of. Yes, sir, I am blessed and, and highly favored. But Pastor, above that, uh, God has placed uh, uh, us in a situation where he's blessed us with a magnificent leader. Uh, well, praise God for that. And I, and I thank God for you, and I praise God for you, and I pray for you daily. Uh, because you've allowed us to, to progress, grow, and develop with the help of the Lord. You know, where we can appreciate the small things. Uh, uh, God will not always have to bless you with great big things. Okay? Yeah. We're not limited in Him mm -mm. You know, what He can do because we know that He, he can do that abundantly above all of it. Thank you, ask. Yes, sir. I think. But the little things in, in, in my life now, in <coughs> my life where I enjoy having peace. Yeah. I enjoy having uh -huh. joy. I, I enjoy seeing <coughs> my wife sit around the house. And See that? I just showed her the other day, Pastor. I said, baby, I thank you for allowing God to, to allow you to make my house a home. Look at that. You know, and, and, and that's a beautiful thing, Pastor. You can, your house can become a home. You know, and a lot of times we don't say the things that we need to say all the time. But, you know, I try to give you your flowers, all of you. You know, I love you all. I, I thank God I don't have to be worried about nobody. I'm, I don't hate nobody. I ain't got that kind of stuff. But when you're going through things, and, and, and God didn't say he would keep us from, from this stuff. That's he right. definitely take us through the thing. And I just thank God for being faithful to his word. And, and he even trusted me to make sure that I can trust him. That I know whatever and whenever, I don't know how, Pastor, but I yes, know sir. he's going to take care of everything. Everything. I do trust in the Lord with all my heart, and I don't mean to my own understanding. But I do acknowledge him in all my ways, and I thank 
All right, give God a praise, somebody. Yeah. Come on. Look at that. Get up. See that? See that? Somebody don't know, man, just to get out to bed and stand on your two feet, amen. Just to be able to put your own clothes on, amen. Just to be able, amen, to walk up a flight of stairs and walk back down, amen. Come on, Sister Grace. You know, the Lord never said that our journey through this life would be an easy one. Yeah. Give God a praise, somebody. Yes. Got time for one or two more, hey amen. We got time for one or two more. Anybody? Yes, sir, Brother Ryan. <laughs> Come on here. Yeah. That's right. Amen. I'm with that. All right. One more. Somebody, amen. Amen. You're looking at your neighbor, amen. You should have been pumped up when you woke up this morning. Amen. Anybody just thankful that your family is still around? Because I, I, I'm in the house and all my family in the house, baby. I, amen. Come on, Craig. Yeah. There you go, man. Man, man. All right. All right. All right. You know, we talk about whipping the devil, stomping the devil, rebuking the devil, getting the devil out of our house, our home, off our back. Read that verse in Revelation. It said they overcame the devil. Overcame with the testimony. And they overcame him not just by the blood of the lamb, but they overcame him by the word of their testimony. testimony. Amen. Uh, we closing out. We getting ready to receive a Christmas seed, but I, I just wanted to drop this on you. Don't you let the devil mute your mouth. Amen. Amen. I said, don't you let the devil mute your mouth. Amen. Right. Amen. When Jesus cursed that fig tree and they wondered how he did it. Amen. He said, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. Yeah. Yeah. And God's kind of faith, it speaks into existence. Amen. That which isn't so that it will be and become. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let me say it again. He spoke it. Amen. Amen. Because the God kind of faith works different from our faith. He conceives in the beginning what he believes to receive. All the way. You and I, amen, if you just look at natural birth, you have to receive it, to believe it, to conceive it, amen. Amen. The doctor had to say, you pregnant, am I right? Because you had received something. And after the doctor showed you on the x-ray, I told you, you believed it. Seven, nine months later, you conceived it. That's the natural way. God's kind of way, man, he gives birth to it right there in the beginning, even before it becomes, amen. So I'm talking to somebody tonight who may have troubles, trials, and tests. Don't magnify your trouble, trials, and tests. Magnify your answer. Magnify your solution. Magnify your blessing, amen. Because if you believe it, look at your neighbor and say, you can receive it, right? Come on here, amen. You ain't got to wait to get to the doctor to be healed. Come on, you can say, I'm healed right now. You ain't got to wait for the check to come, amen. You can say, I'm delivered right now, amen. Come on, you ain't got to wait, amen, for the email. You can say, everything is going to be on. All right, come on, let's worship the Lord as we get ready to worship God and giving tonight. Amen. Yeah, we are worshiping God and giving tonight. Somebody would say, well, why do you worship God and giving, amen? Because he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And did you know, amen, when people started celebrating Christmas, to celebrate Christmas, it was because of what? The birth of Christ. Amen. Pastor preached about it Sunday. Said there were three, uh, not three, but there were many wise men who had come following a star. And when they found him who was born King of Kings, Lords of Lords, they didn't come empty handed. Can you tell your neighbor they didn't come empty handed? No, no. They had gifts. They brought gifts. They had gold. They had frankincense. Mm -hmm. They had myrrh. They didn't have cheap gifts. Those were expensive gifts. Gold, 
frankincense, and myrrh. They brought him to Jesus. Check this out, Janai. They brought him to Jesus, but since he was a baby at the time, they gave him to his mom and daddy. Come on. And you know why they gave him there to his mom and daddy? Because mama and daddy had to take care of Jesus. When Herod found out he had been born and the wise men went home another way and didn't come tell him, he said, well, kill all the babies in, in, in the land. And it says that Joseph had to round Mary and Jesus up and go down into Egypt. Mm. Y'all ain't going to help me preach this. Let me tell you something. They needed some cash and money in their pocket get down there to Egypt. Amen. Are y'all with me? So, the, amen. The Lord fixed it, Sue, where they would put something in their mama and daddy's hand to take care of Jesus. And that's where you and I come in in modern day times. You know why? Because we're putting it in the Lord's hands. But you know why we're putting it in his hands? To take care of the Lord's church, y'all. Y'all ain't going to shout with me tonight. Amen. Amen. So come on, tell your neighbor, yeah, I'm ready to bless God. Amen. Because God has what truly blessed? Bless me. Amen. Amen. I know some of y'all spend it on all your gifts and all your packages. I just pray you bought it for somebody who's going to think about you after you give it to them. Because a lot of us are going to debt during this time of season, buying gifts for folk who ain't even thinking about us to make them happy. And once they get our gift, they're going to go on their way. And, okay, y'all ain't feeling me yet. Come on, lift your seed to the Lord tonight. Amen. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we say thank you for the privilege to worship you in giving. We bring this Christmas seed, God, and we sow it, God, into the work of the ministry. God saying thank you for Jesus. God, your word tells us you have given us a Savior, God, and that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So, God, we release the seed in need of our lives tonight. Believe it tonight as well. You will increase this seed, decrease and remove the need. According to your word, when we say amen, we're saying amen because it's already done in our life. What's done, what we're believing you for, what we're trusting you for, what we're asking you for, what we are looking to you for, amen, it's already done. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. As we plant this seed and prosper, we praise over it because it prevails. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say amen. Amen, amen. Can we borrow a pen right quick? For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. It's 20 minutes to we're getting ready for the word of God tonight, the Christmas message. And it's been announced, amen, that it would be a special message tonight because God has chosen none other than our own first lady, Lady Regina Green. Amen. Lady Regina Green. Amen. Amen. I heard it mumbling and grumbling. Somebody said, well, she's not a preacher. Amen. She's not called to the ministry. Well, if you read the book, Word of God, specifically Acts 8 and 4, I believe it's around there. It declares that you and I who have been born again, we all preachers. Amen. Come on here. I say we all preachers. We don't have to put reverend on our name, Dr. Bishop and all that other stuff. But a preacher is just one who God has given a message to give to somebody else. To tell them the good news. Amen. Amen. So y'all need to start preaching your message. Amen. Because the Lord, amen, has people out in the world who need some good news. Am I right about it? Amen. So we're going to get ready. Amen. I want you to stand. Go give somebody a holy hug. Amen. About three, four, five of them. Just tell them Merry Christmas to you. And let's sing this. Emmanuel. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. 
cut me up some. Come on. we got tonight. We worship you. I said, how many worship? Okay, y'all ain't with me tonight. All right, stay there. Come. Come. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Worship. Worship and adore him. Don't she look good tonight, y'all? She, she was looking so good tonight. I said, I'm going to put my leather on tonight. She said, you know you can't get in that leather. I went out the room and jumped back in the room. She said, ooh, you in that leather. OK, all right. He just tell everything, don't he? He does. Amen. I did say he looked good. I did say he can get back in it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Truly, it is an honor and a privilege to stand before you this evening. Amen. Uh, I do thank uh, Pastor for allowing me this time to come and share what thus saith the Lord, this Christmas uh, pre-eve message. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to ask that you pray for me in the name of Jesus. But truly, I am so honored to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, his birthday, his day. Amen. 
And that's really what Christmas is all about. Amen. It's really what Christmas is all about. And I want to share with you the gifts of Christmas. Amen. If you don't mind, um, you know, I know we don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm going to move through this as quickly as I can. But, uh, you know, for a lot of people, well, first of all, let me just pray and just thank God. You guys can have your seat. Amen. Have your seat. Amen. But Father, we just thank you and praise you and we just glorify your holy name. We thank you, dear God, and as we come before you this evening, dear God in heaven, to share with us, saith the Lord, I'm praying that every heart will be open, dear God in heaven. I'm praying that your word will go forth in such a way, dear God in heaven, that it will be acceptable into the hearts, dear God, of the hearers and the listeners, that it will produce the desired fruits within each and every life that you have purposed and intended for it to. We rebuke all works of the enemy by an every assignment of the enemy, but Lord, we look to you for victory this evening. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. But like I said, I want to share with you the gifts of Jesus. Because you know what? All through uh, the Christmas season, you know, we're always contemplating and we're hurrying and we're trying to find the perfect gift. And for some people, they go into debt, okay, and stuff. They want to spend too much money. They get upset and stressed out because they don't have enough money to spend. But I want to share with you that that's really not what Christmas is all about. Amen. Sometimes we get uh, 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 all... Uh, worked up because we have certain expectations or hopes, you know what I'm saying, for different things that we want to uh, receive. Our kids, you know, they get all worked up. They want this and they put the demands on us and whatnot. But if we can get away from what Christmas offers and get back to what Christmas is really all about, we will never, ever, ever be disappointed. Amen. Never be disappointed. For Pastor had already spoke about a little bit about how the wise men, how they bought Jesus some gifts, and they brought some unusual gifts. You know, we know they brought some frankincense, they brought uh, gold, they brought mirth, okay? But it's to the point that, yeah, while they brought those gifts, those were not the first gifts, whether you know it or not. The first gift was Jesus. Amen. That's what the first gift was. And that's what we need to be focused on this Christmas season. And every Christmas season is that the first gift that was given was Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn with me, if you will. And I want to verify that and let you see for yourself. Amen. For it says over in Galatians chapter four, verse five. And this just shows just how much God loves us. It's just a simple message. Amen. Nothing heavy this evening, just simple. Amen. But it says, Galatians 4, chapters 4 and 5, it says, But when the proper time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born subject to the reg regulations of the law. I know your Bible may say something a little different, but I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. To purchase the freedom of those ransomed to redeem, to atone for those who were subject to the law. He's talking about us, that we may be adopted and have sonship, amen, confer upon us and be recognized as God's son. That's what Jesus did for you and I. When he was born, that gift. So he was born under the law to redeem those from the law, amen, to put us in a place and a position where we can call God Father, amen. And now, you know what? That's something to meditate on and that's something to think about. Thank God that somebody did something for us that we could not do for ourselves, that we can have a better way of life. While we're so concerned about trying to buy gifts to make people happy, to make them momentarily happy for a moment, because sometimes, you know, uh, for a few months, they might enjoy the gift. But after that, for some people, you might go back and ask them, where is the gift? Okay, and they don't know where the gift is, amen? Some people you can't pick the right gift for, amen? They kind of tuck it away and don't have any use for it. They rewrap it the next year and give it to somebody else because they really wasn't pleased with the gift, amen? But praise be to God that he gave us the perfect gift, amen? We don't have to put that gift back, amen? That is an acceptable gift. That is the perfect gift for you and I, amen? I want you to turn with me, if you will, over to Rome, I mean Isaiah 9, amen, uh, chapter 6. I tell you we're going to have to move on through this, okay? And we're talking about the gifts, okay, that Jesus gave you and I. Isaiah, if you can turn there for me, number 9, and we want to look at verse 6, amen? You guys there? Praise God. 
So it says, for unto us, amplified body, body, uh, Bible again, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. So a child's born, a son, that was someone's son, that was God the Father's son. So he gave his son for you and I, the best, the perfect gift, unconditionally, with so much love backed up behind it. Just think about it and pause for a moment. When you buy a gift for somebody, how much love are you, is it backed up with? Amen. Just think about the person, you know, when you got to do that uh, secret Santa at work and, you know, and you kind of concerned about whose name you're going to pick because you really sometimes don't want to get the wrong person's name. Even if you get the wrong person's name, how much love is backed up behind that gift that you go and purchase for that person? When you think about the gift that God gave you and I, and we are by no means perfect, and we became perfect as a result of receiving him into our life, but prior to that, you know what? We weren't perfect. But God didn't give us that gift conditionally, okay? He didn't put, I mean, unconditionally. He didn't put conditions and limits on it, did he not? He just unconditionally loved and gave it to us. How much effort do we put into buying a gift for those that we love versus those that we don't love. Amen. But he said, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Right here, I'm going to show you the five gifts that Jesus gave you and I. Amen. It says the government's going to be upon his shoulder. The government means government or authority that that is resting on him. It means that he is going to rule. The government that has been invested in him, that he's going to be called king. So he has the government that's already been invested in him, that he's going to reign, that he is king, and he's, uh, his authority trumps all other authorities authority. What are you talking about, Lady Regina? Well, just think about it for a moment. We've been given a child that has authority that trumps all other authority, and he, that should give us a sense of security. Amen? It should give us not only a sense of security, but hope. And it should give us an expectation because with somebody with that kind of authority who's going to fight on our behalf, who's going to look out for us with that kind of power, we don't have to be concerned about what goes on in this world. Amen? We don't have to be concerned about what adversary is coming against us, what kind of darts, what trials, or what's being thrown after us. We got somebody who is reigning king, reigning supreme with so much authority, amen, that you should feel so secure. You should feel so protected. You should feel so just relaxed and unconcerned about who's looking out for you, amen? Like we guard our house, we got bars, we got security. Some of us got some other little things in the closet and up under the pillow, amen, okay? We got a dog, okay? I got a little, I got a little pretty dog, okay? I have a little Maltese, but she thinks she a big Doberman, amen? Because somebody before they, they pull up in front of the house, before that car even get up in front of the house, good, she starts barking, amen? Because she doesn't know her limits, amen? But it's to the point we got somebody who is bigger and greater than that. Amen. Do we, do you understand that? So we shouldn't have to wrestle with different things. We shouldn't have to get consumed with, you know, the dictates and the, the trials and the challenges and whatnot. We got somebody that we can rest in where we should feel so secure, so relaxed in, so at peace. And his name is Jesus. His authority trumps any other authority. Have you ever thought about that? His authority, his power trumps anything else. Amen. So he is the one, okay, who knows us inside and out, and he's going to fight for us. You know why he's going to fight for us? Because he always wants us to win. He always wants us to win. He always wants us to rise every day to a higher level. Amen. So it says that the government is upon his shoulder, that he has authority. Amen. So we want to look at it again. It said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the authority is upon his shoulder. Amen. So he got the authority, but it says his name's going to be called Wonderful. Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. These are descriptions that describe him, but they deal with our everyday life. Okay, you want to know how they deal with our everyday life? First it says that his name is Wonderful. So these are attributes that describe him and who he is. So it says he's called Wonderful. In other words, that's separating him from the ordinary. 
he's not just an ordinary person. Now, we want to treat him like he's an ordinary person. We want to treat him like he's the bellhop when we, we get in trouble. Jesus, I need you to hurry up and do this. But do you walk with your everyday life everyday life when it's not the Christmas season and think about that he's looking at each and everything you do. He's not ordinary. But in our actions, in our day-to-day -day walk, how humble are we to make sure that our hearts are always bowed before him regardless of what we go through, how we walk through, who we interact with. Are we always humble before him to say, Lord, you got my best even when I don't feel like doing my best? You know, is the best always coming out of me, even when I don't feel like being at my best? You hear what I'm saying? Because we serve an awesome God. And we say that too loosely. We're so careless with it that some of us, I think we just become so dull with it that it's just something that just automatically comes out of our mouths. But does it really resonate within our heart that we serve a true, living, live, attentive God who is looking at each and everything that we do every, every day? Amen. I want to pause real quickly for the because I know we, we need to get on and I want to get through all of these. But uh, I, we had some customers yesterday that came in uh, on a flight. And some years ago, they sued United Airlines. And in part of they, their settlement, they were awarded two free trips a year wherever they wanted to go. Not only were they awarded that, they were awarded valet service. Amen. Means that before their flight even touches down, there is supposed to be someone there to meet and greet them to attend to their every, every need. Now, they travel with a big dog that's bigger than you and I. And so they've even arranged for TSA, and you know it's hard getting through security. But you know what? They got clout because they can get through security without going through all the different means that we have to go through to get through security. So when they're on a connecting flight, they have security, the manager, the top head, waiting for them to exit, take them outside with their dog to relieve themselves, to get them back. They will even hold a flight, okay? If they're, yes, this is what was in. They had a good lawyer. Now, you know you and I, if we are running late for a flight, ain't nobody going to hold a flight for us. But to make a long story short, they misrepresented me for that person who was supposed to be there, okay, to carry their bags. And I'm like, I'm sorry, we don't provide that kind of service. Because the people that were supposed to be there dropped the ball. I happened to be the one, because we had some ruckus going on the jetway, I had to answer to it to go see what was going on. I'm sorry, you guys are mistaken. That is not in my job description. I'm saying this to say that. We, it went on and went on. But my husband's flight came in, and I was preparing to meet him and surprise him. Well, before I looked up, my husband is coming in on the tail end of these customers, <laughs> which wasn't a good thing, amen? So I had to tell him and the other reverend with him, you guys just keep going. Go down to baggage service, get your bags. Amen. It's okay. I got an irate right here. Keep going. Just keep moving. Amen. I'm saying that to say that. With all of that going on, and it was an ugly, ugly picture, I still had to maintain my composure. You know, I still had, had to maintain my composure. I didn't like what was going on, but I didn't react to what was going on. I couldn't react to what was going on. You know why? Because he's looking at me. I'm sharing that with you because he's looking at us continuously. We need to always make sure that we have died to our flesh die to our emotions, die to the dictates of negativity, because he is looking at us con constantly. He wants us always to arise to a higher level in this life. We cannot arise to the higher level in life if we keep reacting in the flesh and acting like we not a child of God. We have a wonderful Savior who died for us. The best gift that you and I can ever receive is the gift of Jesus Christ, someone who died and laid his life down for us when we couldn't do it for ourselves to ensure that we have a better way of life. So the thing is, how do we receive the gift? Do we treat the gift unkindly? And we do that when our actions don't line up with what God is instructing and telling us to do. Amen? Amen? So it says we have a wonderful, 
okay? We have uh, someone in our life who is wonderful. It separates him from the ordinary. That takes care of the dullness in life. Well, Lady Regina, how does it take care of the dullness in life? Well, the wonderful word comes from the root word wonder. Amen. And the word used here can be translated amazing. Don't we sing a song that he is amazing? Amen. Surprising. Doesn't he do new things if we will allow him to do it in our lives every day? Amen. He is astonishing. Some of the things that he does and the miracles that he performs in our life, they are just mind-boggling, astonishing, okay, that we can't understand how he did it, but we thank God that he did it. Amen. He is all inspiring to inspire us to always be at our best and to rise to a greater level. Amen. He, it should excite us. We should be moved with excitement. But are we, we moved with that? Amen. We should be moved with amazement and we should be moved with wonder and adoration to him. Amen. But are we there yet? Okay. If we can't receive the sacrifice that he made for us, something's wrong. Something's wrong. We need to begin to reflect on what he did. And if we begin to do that, then out of it's going to produce a heart of sincere allness. Allness. Lifting my hands to you in awe and adoration. Amen. Appreciation. Gratitude. Thankfulness. And then it's going to move us into a place of worship. Why? Because of all what he did for us. Amen. We serve a phenomenal, remarkable, amazing, amen, awesome God. And that's just to name a few. Amen. So the first gift he gave us was wonderful. Amen. The next gift he gave us, counselor. Okay. Counselor expresses a distinct gratitude or quality. The name counselor here is of honorable rank. Amen. One who is suited to stand near princesses and kings as an advisor. This is our God, okay? And this is who we're talking about. It is expressive of great wisdom and of qualification to guide and direct. He can help us deal with any issue or situation in life, and he can bring it to wholeness and completion. This counselor, this gift that he's given, this is a gift that he's given unto us. And we don't have to wait to a certain time of the year to unwrap the gift. Amen. We can open these gifts any time of the year. Amen. They are accessible to us 365 days of the year. Amen. And we don't have to worry about going, putting a down payment on, ripping out the credit cards, writing out some checks, over and extending ourselves when we know we shouldn't be doing it. We have card blocks and accessibility constantly at all times. Amen. So Jesus is, he's a wonderful counselor. This takes care of the decisions in our life. We always want to make sure that we make the right decision. But if we would go to the counselor and seek his advice, amen, we don't ever have to worry about missing the mark. He's going to ensure that we are always on the mark. Amen. So we don't have to do the thinking. We don't have to do the reasoning for ourselves. Praise God that he took all of that away from us. Praise God that he's our advocate. Praise God that he will ensure that we have the right decision for every situation and circumstance that we deal with. Amen? Amen. So in our everyday life, when we want to make decisions and we want to ensure that we make the right ones, go and talk to God. Wait on him patiently and allow him to give you the answer and the direction to lead us into our destiny. Amen? Number three, his name is Mighty. Amen. Mighty God. Now we said we, he's a mighty God. Amen. You know what? Let me just say this to the choir, to when you are singing, if you are meditating and really thinking about these words and what he is saying, there is a power and a surge that's going to rise up within you and you're going to shock and amaze yourself. Amen. When the power of God hits you and you start singing about what it is that he is. Amen. He is a mighty God. And if we're singing that he's a mighty God congregation, it's going to hit you too. If you are meditating, you know what? You can blow the walls off this place. But see, he is a mighty God. We don't serve a, a, a little puny, okay, a little weak God, amen. We serve a God of strength, and we need to treat him as such, okay. It irks me when we don't treat him the way he needs and he should be treated. He is our king. 
He is a king to be reverenced, and we need to reverence him and treat him. If a President Obama walked in here, you guys couldn't stand and be humble enough, okay, and stuff, to give him the adoration as president. Don't you know our God deserves that trillion times more than that? He is our wonderful God. He is our amazing God. And because he's wonderful and amazing, we are wonderful uh, and amazing. President Obama, I praise God for the black man in president. But all President Obama can do for me, amen, you know what I'm saying? And though he's leading, I got some things going on with my insurance that I didn't have going on with my insurance before President Obama got in the office. So President Obama can't fix that, but you know who, I mean, he made it worse, let me say that. But I'm telling you, okay, because I ain't never had to pay the kind of insurance, the amount I'm paying out right now, amen? But it's to the point, it's like this. My God could meet that need. So although President Obama tried to do good, God is doing greater to meet the need for what he has caused, amen? So do you understand what I'm saying? Our God, and we need to treat and reverence our God as such. He's not a complacent God. He is a real and living God. And if you will spend time with God in prayer, if you would stay in the word of God, if you would start speaking out of your mouth that I am the greatness of God. I am wonderful because God made me wonderful. I am amazing and I can do amazing things because as he is, so am I. See yourself the way he has called you and already spoken of you. But we will not see ourselves the way he has called us and he has spoken of us. We speak opposite. And I don't care what, I'm going to speak because I am a queen. He has called me queen. He had, and whether you know it or not, Regina means queen. How appropriate. Amen. Praise God to mom. Amen. And praise God. But I am the queen, and I am going to carry myself like that queen. Amen. The queen likes and desires like nice, wonderful things. God said, I can have whatever it is I can have. He would give me the desire. Amen. So I'm going to live the way he has called and purposed for me to live. Amen. I will not live beneath the privileges of someone else. He allowed his son. He said he's given unto us. He has given us. Have we received him is the question. He said he has given us his son. Have we received him? He said, I will supply your every need. If he said he going to supply it, how come we wondering if he going to do it? He said, I'm, confess it out. Lord, I thank you that every day this day my need is met. Don't get upset and think, hey, she thinks she more than that and she got a haughty attitude. No, she does not. I will not allow anybody to take me where he has already brought me from. Amen. And for you to allow somebody to take you and keep you where he's already delivered you from, something is wrong with you. I will not disregard my God. I will not slap him in the face and take myself somewhere he's already allowed his son to shed his blood for me to be delivered. Amen. This is what Christmas is about. It's appreciating the gifts that he has given us. It's okay to buy gifts. It's okay to do. But the real essence of Christmas is glory and honor and to be thankful unto him. Amen. So we serve a mighty God, okay? He has great strength. He has great strength. God is not only a good man, Jesus, but he is the God man. He is the man. Like the young people say, Okay, I can't believe I didn't reach that age where I can say like the young people to say, okay, but I am at that age. So like the young people say, <laughs> he's a good, he's the God man. And not only is he the God man, he is the man. Is he the man in your life? Who is the man in your life? Okay, think about it. Okay, because if you got the man in your life, you don't need nothing else. Okay. Amen. Um, yes. Okay. Amen. But anyway, he's a mighty God. Okay. And he has great strength and he has power and, to, and might to deliver us from anything that we deal with in life. Any and everything. We ain't got to trip over things. We ain't got to get all agitated. We ain't got to get all concerned and I'm a restless and I don't know how this is going to happen. You know how it's going hand- to work out. Go to Jesus. He didn't already gave us the end. He said, be not dismayed. You have already overcome. So if he said we already overcome, why are we tripping? He's our mighty God. I thank you for that gift, Lord. I thank you that you can deliver me out of any and everything. It ain't nothing too big or too small for you because he is wonderful. He has all power 
He has all authority. He got more authority than all the government officials put together and anything else. We can't even imagine. Our mind cannot even conceive how much authority he has, but he has the power to deliver you and I out of anything that we are going through. And all we need to do is to seek him and receive him as he is. Amen. So he's not a we God. There's nothing impossible for him. He doesn't know. Now trip this. Our God does not know, nor has he ever experienced defeat. Never. Have you ever thought about that? He's never experienced it. He don't even know about it. So defeat in this life, uh-uh, okay? Because see, my God don't know about that. My God only knows about victory, amen? So if he's never experienced it, he's never, you know what I'm saying? He's never dealt with it. Why are we tripping? When we go through and we face with things, all you need to do is run and bow, bow before him. He said, bring all your cares and your concerns unto him because he cares for us. He keeps stressing how much he cares for us. Receive the care. Receive it and act on it and speak it out. There is no problem, no situation, no trial, no anything that is too big and too big. You know what I'm saying? For our God. He doesn't know defeat. He's never experienced it. So if you are interacting with somebody who doesn't know it, never experienced it, but they got authority and power, it's nothing but win-win for you. Nothing but win-win. See yourself like he sees you. Winner, 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 winner. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So we thank God because there's nothing impossible for him. He doesn't know nor he, has he ever experienced defeat. He is the only true God. Amen. And we thank him that he's put us in a position where we can call him father. Amen. He will give us strength. He will guide us. He will direct us if we will allow him to. Amen. Number four, I told you he's given us these gifts. Okay. Everlasting father. Now, taking the word everlasting and applying it to the word father makes his name even more powerful. Now, we were powerful, okay, but we even super powerful now because we got everlasting power and we got that hooked up together. Jesus is the everlasting father. He lasts for all times. He will never stop being who he is. While you got people in your life that's going to flake out on you, they, they with you one day and they're not with you the next day, you can count on and rest assured that he's going to always be with you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He ain't going to never stop being who he is. He ain't going to never stop being consistent. He ain't going to never stop loving you. He ain't going to never stop caring about you. He ain't going to never stop wanting the best for you. He ain't going to never stop healing. He ain't going to never stop delivering. He ain't going to never stop providing. He ain't going to never stop giving you peace. He ain't going to never stop prospering you. Come on now, and I can keep going on and on and on and on. This is who God is, everlasting. So every day, I'm prospering. Every day, I'm being supplied. Every Every day. It is continuously into it's time for me to make my transition on home. It is never ending, never ever to run out. Amen. This is the gift that he gave us. Amen. This gift is these gifts that he gave us are better than us running around in the store, running around making bills. Okay. Stressing out. I'm wondering if I'm going to get this for Christmas. Well, I'm hoping to get this. Well, you know what? So-and-so may not. God has taken care of all of that. If you can just receive who he is and what he's done, he will bring that light into your life. He will bring that lifting into your life. It doesn't matter because you know what? Around this time of the year, people People get sad. They get emotional. They wish so-and-so was here. I wish both my parents were here. I am an orphan. Amen. But you know what? God has filled that void. You know why he's filled that void? Because I allowed him to fill that void. Because his presence in my life and his peace is greater than my mother, than my father. You know what? I love them greatly. No shadow of doubt about that. But he can replace and give you what they cannot give. I praise God for the time that he allowed us to be together, but you don't dwell on it to the point where you allow it to hurt you and take away from you what he's already done. In Christ Jesus, every day is Christmas. Means every day is wonderful for me. Every day is amazing for me. Every day is peaceful for me. Every day is joyful for me. Regardless of what the situations dictate, because I can't change what's in the day, but God can show change me for the day. Amen. So this Christmas, if you are sad this Christmas if you're wondering that nobody loves you this Christmas if you didn't get the card or what you wanted this Christmas you know if nobody put the gift or the desired one this Christmas if you didn't have you know God has said I've already given it to you 
Why are you ignoring me and you're looking for somebody else, okay, to supply what I've already supplied? I've already taken care of your happiness. I've already taken a care of, you know what I'm, uh, everything you need, okay? He said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. All you have to do is to believe in me, amen. So if you believe in me whatsoever you ask, okay, in prayer, I'm going to give it to you, amen. So, hey, that sounds to me like carte blanche. So I'm looking for one gift. I'm getting bit out of shape because so-and-so didn't give me a phone call. Shame on you. He said, I'm going to supply your need continuously. He said, I am the everlasting father, the everlasting father who's going to take care of you continuously, always, and always love you. The everlasting father. He says, I'm today, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He says, you got everlasting provision. You got everlasting clothes, amen. You got everlasting portion. He promotes us to everlasting honor. He saves us with an everlasting salvation, amen. He gives us everlasting love toward us always. Well, that sounds like it takes care of the destiny in our life because we know where we're going, amen. We know where we're going because he's already established where we're going, amen. So if we're wondering about where we're going, he just told us he's everlasting. I've taken care of your portion. I've taken care of your destiny, amen. I've taken care of the love. I've taken care of the direction. I've taken care of your provisions. I've taken care of your clothing. I've taken care of all these things. So you ain't going nowhere but up. It's always a win-win for us. Amen. Receive the gift that God has given us. The last one, it says that he is the prince of peace. He is the prince among prince. That means he's supreme. It's nice to walk with royalty, isn't it? Isn't it? It's nice to be close. It's nice to have access, amen? And we got access to him 24-7, okay? Being a prince only happens with royalty. So you know we are queens and princesses, and we are associated and connected with royalty, amen? Jesus is the prince of peace, and that means that he has all authority, honor, and power of peace. He is the authority of peace, amen? So that takes care of the disturbances in life. Okay, I told you that's for us to disturbances. So it's to the point, hey, no matter what disturbance, no matter what trial, no matter what's worrying my mind, we shouldn't be worrying because worrying is a sin anyway, in case you didn't know that. But whatever disturbance that we're dealing with, all we need to do is say, Lord, I thank you for your peace. Peace rise up in me today. He said, peace I give unto you. Peace I leave with you. He giving it, he leaving it, not as the world giving it. See, we're looking for the world's peace to satisfy us. And the world's peace will never comfort and satisfy us. But he says, I am the authority of peace. Therefore, I am the originator of peace. I'm leaving you peace. I'm giving you peace. All you need to do is accept the peace that I've given you. Amen. So that's going to take care of the disturbances in life. A life that's filled with disturbances and uh, uh, distractions, quite frankly. Uh, uh. Yes, okay. It's a problem. It's a problem. Because if a Christian's life is filled with all of that, there's a problem. You either ain't never gotten on the track or you've gotten off the track. Okay? Okay, one of the two. But if you will only yield yourself to God and begin to receive and say, Lord, I thank you for your peace. I thank you that your peace is mounting up upon my heart, and I thank you that it's in my mind. It's covering my mind. It's the umpire of my mind. That will take care of the disturbances, because a lot of disturbances start right up in here, in this thought life right here. And a lot of us, we yield to a lot of, un, you know, a lot of thoughts that are not right, and you have to take authority over that. A lot of you knew my mom, and my mom died at 55 of cancer. 55, and that's a young age, and it's a hurting thing, you know what I'm saying, when it just, you don't even know, it wasn't detected or anything, before they they got it, my mom was gone, and every now and then, you guys know when I had that meningitis, every now and then I have these terrible, terrible headaches, and the other day, the headache was so bad, I mean, it was just so bad, and I just like to go and be quiet, you know, and just chill out and do my, my thing, you can't bend down, you can't do anything, and the enemy was trying to put that in my mind, that you're getting close to your mom's age, Okay, and the same thing's going to happen to you. But you know what? I was able to rest and find peace in Jesus because I know my God says that by his stripes, I am healed and I have to speak that out. See, that's the only way that we're going to defeat the enemy is by the word of our testimony. And that's the weapon that he gave us. He didn't tell us to thank it out. 
He didn't tell us to reason it out. He didn't tell us to vacillate back and forth. But if we want to obtain and achieve and receive what he has given unto us, all we got to do is speak it out. And I had to take authority over it because I know my rights. Satan, you are lie. You can't put that on me. This body is covered from head to toe and I am healed in the name of Jesus. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. I cast that out and that thought, you got to go right now in Jesus' name. You got to speak it out. It's not just going to happen itself on out of the way. But if you don't speak it and take authority over and use the power that he's already given us, it will consume you because you've allowed it to come into your life and you've allowed it to consume you. And I had to pray and take authority over it and praise God. It went away because I know my covenant rights. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And the enemy cannot trespass unless we give him permission. And we give him permission, but not following and doing what Jesus has already told you and I to do. Amen. So in other words, uh, let me close right here because I know we don't have a lot of time. No matter what we may be feeling or going through, there is one who will help us with all the disturbances and distractions in life. His peace passed all understanding, and it's going to comfort us like no other. And that's the peace that Jesus left us. That's the peace that he gave us. And there's nothing in this world, amen, that can compare to the peace that Jesus has gave us. As you sung the song that Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God is with us. God is always with us. Think about it. Reflect on it every day. Every, when you get up in the morning, all throughout the course of the day, just in your heart, make melody and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I don't have to wait until your birthday to say thank you. I can celebrate your birthday every day. I can celebrate and receive and just partake of the gifts that you've gave, given me every day. They have not worn out, nor will they wear out. There is no price that we can put on the gifts that he's given you and I. So while you're wondering about this Christmas, if you, somebody met the need in your life, if they didn't meet the, meet the need, don't sweat it. Say, Lord, thank you, because you already met that need. And I'm thankful for everything that you have given unto me. Amen. Thank you, amen, for receiving my little Christmas message. God bless you. I love you. And I sure hope you receive something in this message. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank oh, come on, get on your feet. Get on your feet. Come on, put your hands together. The gifts of Christmas, the gifts of Christmas. Bow your heads right where you are tonight. Bow your heads where you are. Because somebody might be ready for Xmas, but are you ready for Christmas? The text said unto us, a child has been born, a son has been given. And he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Have you received God's gift to this world? Amen. In the presence of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Amen. Have you received that gift? Because if there once again is no tree and there are no lights and there are no packages and there are no presents, if you've got Jesus, you're not just going to have Christmas tomorrow. One day, you can have Christmas every day. Jesus is the gift that just keeps on giving. The clothes will wear out. The perfume and cologne bottle will empty. The toys will need new batteries, amen, and new, new parts, amen. The car will get old, amen. But Jesus, he gets better and better and better as the day goes by. Heads about, eyes are closed, saints are praying. But tonight, if you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and you know that you know you've been born again, saved from sin, I just want you to raise your hand tonight while heads about, eyes are closed. If you receive Christ, the gift of Christmas, amen, I want you to raise your hands tonight. Amen. If you've received, and I don't see everybody's hands, so I'm going to take you, you don't have Jesus in your life. Amen. And if you don't have him, I wouldn't leave here tonight without him. Amen. Who knows, amen, less long what tomorrow's going to hold, what rest of the night's going to hold. But boy, if I got Jesus in my life, I'm not only, he's not only going to hold me tomorrow, he's going to hold me tonight. In fact, he'll hold me, amen, even when I step off into eternity. You can take your hands down, amen. If there's one tonight stands in the need of prayer because Lady Regina ministered a true word, it ought to be the most wonderful time of the year. We ought to be happy and glad. We ought to have smiles on our faces, amen. But for somebody, it may be a disappointing time. It may be a depressing time. 
It may be a disturbing time. Maybe there's an issue in your life, a situation and condition. And it might not even be an issue, but you say, Pastor, I'm standing in the need of prayer tonight. And tonight before we leave, if you're standing in the need of prayer, brothers and sisters are in Christ tonight to stand with you in your hour of prayer. So if there's one tonight, I want you to come. I want you to come. Amen. If you're standing in the need of prayer, I want you to come. Not going to take it lightly. Not going to take it coincidentally. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing going on. Prayer changes things. Things that change when you pray. Sexual fervent prayer, righteous men and women, it availeth much. Amen. You're standing in the need of prayer. Just pray with me. Pray for me. You don't need to explain nothing. You don't need to tell nothing or say nothing tonight. We just going to pray one with another. We're going to pray one for another. And we're going to believe God's mercy and grace will cover us all tonight. We're different people with different types of needs. But the same God that's above us all is the same God that can help us all. Wherever two or three touch and agree and gather in prayer, God said, I'll get in the midst of that prayer group. And I won't just hear what they're saying, but I will help them by what they're saying. I want you to extend your prayer right now. Reach out and touch somebody. Grab them by the hand. Throw your arms around them. Amen. You may not know their name. You may not know why they're down here right now. But whatever you're here for, I want you to start asking God to do it for them. Help them, God. Bless them, God. Make a way for them. Open the door for them. God, amen, turn it around for them like I'm asking you to turn it around for me. Change it for them like I'm asking you to change. Touch their family like I'm asking you to touch mine, God. Make their house a home like I'm asking you to do for my home right now. Heal their body, God, right now from head. Whatever you're asking God for, can you believe, begin to intercede and pray and ask God for the other? And then those of y'all in the congregation, you just stretch your hand this way and say, God, supply their every need. A simple prayer, amen. If you can just say, God, supply their every need. You might be here the next time and you sowed a seed, amen, that you stood with somebody in their time, which would allow God to touch somebody to stand with you in your time. Heavenly Father, we bless you tonight. We praise you tonight for these who have come on Christmas Eve night, God. And tonight, yeah, Jesus is the reason for the season. And now they have come, God. You know their need because you can see their need. But now they stepped out on faith, God. They've asked for prayer, God, tonight. And now that they stand where they stand, you don't just see their need. I know your great desires to supply even more than they need. Our prayers through the church, the word of God, the Holy Spirit, God, the believers in God, that you would grow them in grace, the knowledge of you, a hedge of protection around their heart, spirit, and mind. The enemies during this holiday time and season, and even days after, will not steal, will not kill, shall not destroy, God, that which you prosper and increase their will. They took the first step, God, and this is only the beginning. Because if you will help us to take one step, God, I know you're able to help us take two. And we thank you for this. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. It's in Jesus' name we praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we prevail. And now, God, that we're about all ready to leave here tonight, God, we want to say thank you once again. You brought us here this Christmas Eve night. You blessed us here this Christmas Eve night. God, we're going to leave this place, but none of us are going to leave your grace. We're leaving covered with the blood. We're leaving, amen, with your angels in charge, knowing that no weapon formed against any of us, amen, is going to prosper because in you, through you, and because of you, we're already more than conquerors. But one more time, let us say thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus is the reason for this season. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Come on, send it so the devil won't steal it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen. 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 God bless you. Merry Christmas to you. And let's look for a blessed, happy new year. Amen. Hallelujah. Find you somebody before you leave and tell them Merry Christmas. Blessed Christmas. All right. Come on, come on.